Most student musicians experience mechanical problems with their instrument at some time. Trying to play a damaged instrument can be frustrating, discouraging, and repair work can be expensive. In the next few minutes, we would like to show you how to prevent problems with your instrument by demonstrating some simple procedures and principles of instrument care. Research has shown that 80% of all damage to student musical instruments is caused by improper handling and assembly and lack of cleaning and maintenance. It is obvious then that you can save yourself up to 80% of the frustration, wasted time and expenses associated with damaged and dirty instruments simply by learning to take proper care of your instrument. By learning to take, take care, care, take, take pride. pride. Most musicians would agree that an ideal instrument is one that works properly, looks nice, is clean and sanitary, and will last a long time. You can have an instrument like this simply by following the CARE formula. C. Commit. Commit to take care, take pride. Commit to watch and listen to this videotape closely, and commit to learn all the procedures for your instrument. A. Ask. Ask any question you have about your instrument. If there is something you don't understand, ask your band director ask your private music teacher, or ask a qualified repair technician. R. Repeat. Repeat consistently the daily, weekly, and monthly maintenance schedule as described in this video and on the care card for your instrument. Make a habit of consistently repeating the correct assembly procedures. E. Expert. Take your instrument to a repair expert whenever you have mechanical problems with it. You should take your instrument in for a checkup at least once a year to see if it needs professional lubrication and adjustment. Commit, ask, repeat, expert. The care formula is simple, but it can bring great results and make your band experience much more enjoyable. Now come with us and learn to take, take care, care, take, take pride. pride. These instruments are members of the woodwind family. They are beautiful instruments and they make beautiful music when they are functioning properly. However, they are all very delicate instruments and can be damaged easily in everyday use. Let's take a look at some things that all woodwind players should do. Then we will demonstrate specific care procedures for your instrument. The number one problem with woodwind instruments is caused by not assembling and handling them correctly. Let's look at an all too common scene. Stop. Do you notice how the student has taken the instrument out of the case? Grabbing your woodwind instrument like this will bend the soft metal keys and cause notes not to play. The keys on woodwind instruments are very fragile and are designed only to withstand pressure from your fingers on the pad cups while playing. Following some general rules will help prevent damage to your instrument. Lift your instrument out of the case by the end of the joints and always avoid handling your instrument by the keys during assembly and handling, except as shown in this video. Take responsibility for your instrument. You should be the only one playing and handling your instrument. Whenever you are not playing your instrument, it should be in its case. After you put your instrument in the case, always make sure that the case latches are closed tightly before you pick it up. Even when your instrument is in its case, it must be handled carefully and set down gently to avoid damage. Always keep your instrument in a safe place at home and at school to prevent others from tampering with it. The second most common problem with woodwind instruments is caused by what you blow into them. As you play your instrument, sugar, food particles, and other chemicals are blown into your instrument. This mouthpiece is an example of the residue that can build up in your instrument if it is not cleaned regularly. This residue is much like the plaque that builds up on your teeth and can be just as destructive. Several problems can result from this buildup. Pads can become coated with residue and stick. Your instrument may become a host to bacteria and viruses, which could be harmful to you and your instrument. This bacteria culture was taken from a dirty instrument. Bacteria such as these form acids, which can eat through the tubing of your instrument, leaving behind what is called red rot, or these little red spots. Following some general rules will help you avoid these problems. Avoid drinking soft drinks or eating for at least one hour before playing. If you must eat just before playing, be sure to rinse your mouth thoroughly with water. What goes in must come out. Each day after playing, the water from your instrument should be removed using the proper swab or cleaning cloth. Once a week, your mouthpiece should be cleaned using warm soapy water and a mouthpiece brush. Everyone likes to have an instrument that looks nice. 
However, everyday use of your instrument can destroy a bright finish on the body and the keys. Natural acids from your fingerprints and perspiration will actually eat through the lacquer finish on a saxophone, the silver plating on flutes, and the keys on other woodwinds. You can prevent this by wiping these fingerprints off gently with a soft cloth every day. While polishing, special care must be taken not to damage the keys of your instrument. Moths are also a common problem to woodwind instruments. Just as moth larvae eat through the hole in the instrument, if they get in your case. Moth larvae usually only become a problem when you are storing an instrument for an extended amount of time in a warm place. If you need to store your instrument, place cedar wood chips in the case. Doing this should keep the moth larvae out and your pads safe. We will now demonstrate proper assembly and handling techniques and the daily, weekly, and monthly cleaning and maintenance procedures as found on your instrument's care card. The clarinet is made of five main sections. It is important to know the names of these sections in order to assemble it properly the mouthpiece, the barrel, the upper joint, the lower joint, and the bell. The joints are connected by tenons and tenon sockets. Before assembling your clarinet, it is a good idea to put a reed in your mouth so that you can soak it while you are assembling your instrument. The first step in assembling the clarinet is to put the mouthpiece and barrel together and set them back in the case. This is done first so that the clarinet will not have to be set back down once it is assembled. To assemble the main body, lift the upper joint out of the case with your right hand like this. Place it in your left hand with the brand name of the clarinet facing upward. Grip the joint with your fingers pressing down on the ring keys so that the bridge key on the lower end of the joint is lifted like this. Next, lift the lower joint out of the case with your right hand by the lower end and hold it with your thumb resting solidly on the pad cup of the CF key just below the cluster of four. And your other fingers wrapped around the area of the joint where there are no keys. Aim the bridge key of the lower joint at the open D tone hole. Turn a quarter of the turn to the left while pushing the joints together and line up the bridge keys. If the joints resist going together, stop. Using excessive force can damage your clarinet. Check your tenon corks. If they are dry, apply a small amount of cork grease to the cork. Rub it in with your fingers and try again. If after this the joints will not go together, ask your teacher or a qualified repair technician for help. To complete the assembly, continue holding the lower joint with your right hand in the same position and take the bell out of the case with your left hand. Connect the bell with the lower joint by twisting them together while using your body for support. To connect the mouthpiece and barrel with the rest of the clarinet, put the bell of the clarinet in your lap and hold the upper joint with your left hand in playing position, the keys facing away. Pick up the mouthpiece and barrel, which were previously joined, and twist the barrel onto the body of the clarinet with the open part of the mouthpiece facing you. You are now ready to place the reed on the mouthpiece and hold it in place with the ligature. This assembly of the clarinet is done best from the top down using the same hand positions to prevent damage to the keys. Now let's look at the daily, weekly, and monthly maintenance schedule that will keep your clarinet clean and working properly. Every day the clarinet player should swab the inside of the clarinet to remove moisture from the instrument. 
and remove fingerprints and perspiration from the keys. After each playing of your clarinet, it is important to remove the moisture from the inside of the instrument with a swab. After removing the mouthpiece and barrel, hold the upper joint with the left hand in the same hand position as in assembly. Point the top down and drop the swab string through the joint. Pull the swab toward the floor so that the swab does not get caught on the pip on the inside of the upper joint. The mouthpiece should not be swabbed. This can damage it. Cleaning the mouthpiece will be discussed later. After swabbing, fingerprints should be carefully wiped off the keys with a cotton flannel cloth. Once a week at a maintenance time outside of class, you should clean the mouthpiece and apply new cork grease to joint tenons. The mouthpiece should be scrubbed with a clarinet mouthpiece brush and warm soapy water. Also at this weekly maintenance time, new cork grease should be applied to all the tenons. Cork grease should be rubbed into the cork with the fingers so that a thin film remains. Be sure to avoid excessive pressure to the keys while applying cork grease. At least once a month, machine wash cleaning cloth. Playing in the band is a fun experience and one which can be a positive influence on the rest of your life. Trying to play an instrument that doesn't work properly only takes away from the fun of playing. Now that you have learned to take care and take pride, you can prevent most of the common problems with instruments simply by following the assembly and handling techniques and the daily, weekly, and monthly maintenance schedule shown in this program. You must decide whether you want an instrument that you can be proud of or an instrument that will give you problems. It's not a hard choice to make when you look at the benefits of taking care and taking pride. You can keep your instrument in top playing condition, prevent needless damage and repair bills, extend the life of your instrument, play more confidently knowing that you have taken care and taken pride. Remember the care formula. Commit. Commit to take care, take pride. Ask. Ask any questions you have about your instrument. Ask your teachers or a repair technician. Repeat. Repeat consistently the care procedures daily, weekly, and monthly as shown on your care card. Expert. Take your instrument to a repair expert whenever you have mechanical problems with it. You should take your instrument in for a checkup at least once a year to see if it needs professional cleaning, lubrication, and adjustment. Good luck, and take, take care, take pride. pride.